just want to give you an update this is from the US Nuclear Regulatory Commission quite a few notifications to the NRC regarding some issues at some various power plants across the country just within the last few days and some people call me an alarmist but look here now I'm gonna mention a couple places that have some really high rad readings um, you're gonna see alert level A which is a RADCON 5 alert 309 in Wisconsin you look downwind from Wisconsin 207 Grand Rapid now people say oh NETC all their rad readings are high okay I can get you their rad readings are higher than it should be on some of them now how I look at it is let's not pay attention to the number let's look and see how much they're e increasing to where they were before and if you see a pattern follow the pattern 321 Indianapolis 542 in Louisville I haven't seen it that high 286 Lexington 208 in Covington 458 West Virginia 300 in Tennessee 234 in Knoxville 469 Raleigh, North Carolina 173 in Wilmington 295 in Augusta This is good for you to see the jet stream and the wind patterns Just get a look at this for a moment Wherever the wind blows, it's the hot particle lottery. Three hurricanes are still out there. Are they going to head for Japan? which is kind of bad if you have a lot of high readings and I think what's going on is you see the circular motion almost here so the contamination that's here is circulating today around the Midwest and that's we had a really high rad reading here and I, I've, I've tended to see that where you see wind kind of get those little patterns you're going to get more build up of uh, Higher rad readings, anyway. One eighty eight in Alabama. Found some scrap metal that was around Birmingham, Alabama. Just within the last couple of days, it was uh, radioactive. It was uh, C 
CCM-137 contamination. That was just in some scrap heap. Then we've been hearing about how routinely FedEx, they're sending radioactive materials routinely through FedEx. It's standard procedure, apparently. Double wrap it, but, I mean, come on, guys. Now, somebody asked me yesterday, how could nuclear reactors, how could that heat up the ocean? Now, at Fukushima, we have three coriums into the ocean. And these coriums, they're hotter than the sun. They're releasing particles into the ocean that are 4,500 degrees. So I am not really surprised we've had the ocean go up just recently within the last few years because of Fukushima. When you have three reactors at 4500 degrees directly in contact with the ocean, now we have three huge hurricanes in the Pacific Ocean and they're going right through that huge spew of Fukushima radioactive water. And we've had some issues around this Midwest area for the last week. And I'm going to show you some of uh, the reports that have been coming out to the NRC. I, I said in my last report, if you read, 
and where a hundred of these rad monitor stations went down and we had a high rating here I said perhaps they're doing some maintenance and what do you know I was looking at the NRC report and they were they have been doing maintenance of some of these recently so I'm gonna read that over to you maybe I'll show you some readings from the right radiation network and a few other sites because I I don't want to just show you any PC I want you to see uh, a whole picture Okay, this is from radcast.org. You can always check out their readings as well, just to cross-reference other sites. It's a good idea. Pennsylvania had a high spike of 60. New Jersey, high spike 63. Watertown, New York, high spike of 69. Fairborn, Ohio, high spike of 59. North Carolina, spike to 58. Alabama had a spike of 52 in Burlington. 62 in Indiana, 64 in Des Moines, Iowa, 108 in Frederick, Wisconsin. We bets area. If you cross reference that to NETC, that's where they had their Radcon alert today. 74 in Sharon, Georgia. I did see the air circulate around Colorado some today. St. Jordan, Utah had 78 spike. Arizona, 78 spiked in Tucson. There's around 60, 65 around the beach. here where you have this 30 uprising on radiationnetwork.com and downwind is 45 in Vienna there's no rad monitoring station here and we had a high reading on the other one I saw this around 56 just a couple minutes ago Let's look at some detail maps so you can get a better picture of some of these readings in the East Coast that are hiding. This, they had a monitor that's down in Pittsburgh. They had a really high rating there. In Pittsburgh, they had a really high count here, about 68 or 88. You couldn't tell it was hidden behind here. Now that rad monitor station is disappeared. And if you notice, see over here, even when you get these detail maps, they're not showing you some of them hiding. Current notification report for September 3rd of 2015. We had a safety equipment failure Covington State looks like Louisiana Fixed gauge shutter stuck in the open position. Whoops. I mean, many of these reactors are, <laughs> some of them are over like 40 years old. So you're going to have a lot of equipment failure. Another thing I was just thinking about the other day is that, especially for people on the West Coast, I think this is a huge concern that all these nuclear reactors, now they're taking in 
radioactive seawater through their cooling and condensing pipes. Now this is just, this just I just thought about this the other day. Maybe this is what's going on even in Japan at Sendai. Because they had a lot of corrosion in their pipes. And it led to some issues where it wasn't condensing good with the seawater. So I think what's happening is now is this is a huge concern for in the future these nuclear reactors are going to be intaking radioactive water and we're going to see a lot more corrosion in these nuclear reactors a lot more of these events popping up so it wouldn't close It contains 62 americum, 241 sources, 30 millicuries per source for a total of 1,860 millicuries, so they say. Now here's in Illinois. We had a Radcon 5 alert around this area. But, you know, according to them, it's not an emergency. This, this happened on 8-20. And we've had the last update since 9-2. It's a power reactor in Illinois. They're, they're saying the condition that could prevent pressure poor block valves from operating. But they always downplay everything. A design flaw was discovered with the pressurizer power operator relief valve. So a valve wouldn't close again. This identified block valve circuit deficiency prevents the created safe shutdown action of locally closing the block valves to mitigate the spurious operation of a PORF. Hourly fire watches of the affected MCR and cable spreading from fire zones have been implemented. In addition, the MCR is continuously staffed and affected cable spreading room fire zones are equipped with detection and automatic suppression. This event is being reported under the 10 CFR 50. For any event or condition that results in the nuclear plant being in an unanalyzed condition that significantly degrades plant safety. But, you know, they, they notify the NRC, but I'm sure they know they didn't tell you anything. Then we had an event that had been retracted, a retracted event. You know radiation doesn't retract. It expands. It burns for thousands of years. Hotter than the sun.
prostate machine leaking. Whoops. Containment in an uncontrolled area for that contamination from a leaking BA-137 generator was discovered in a shed at the University of Tulsa. It is estimated that approximately one millicurie of CS-137 used in the generator was leaked. Careful going in school guys. These laboratories looks like they're not so secure. Contamination occurred between October and November of 2014. So it's been leaking for over a couple years. They discovered the generator leak at the Texas facility in May of 2015, but only recently informed the University of Tulsa. The radiation safety officer at the University of Tulsa surveyed the area on A25 and obtain count rates as high as 100,000 CPM inside the shed. Are you freaking serious? Contamination was also found outside the shed location. Yeah, they're not telling you that number, are they? BA-137 generator which contained 50 millicurious CS-137 was manufactured by the China Institute of Atomic Energy. So they're monitoring the people there and the amount of exposure they got. A port was used to inject radioactive tracers into the material to study its behavior in the flow loop. However, for some reason, possibly bad weather, the crew that performed the work last year decided to set it up in an enclosed pump house immediately adjacent to the pipeline. At some point during the procedure, an estimated 0.1 MCI CS-137 was released into the interior of the structure. The material was in the form of a small resin spear about the size of a poppy seed, with the cesium coating the outside. Sometime around May of that year, they discovered the generator was leaking at the and the facility was contaminated. After finding the contamination, they decontaminated the area using adhesive tape to pick up the material. So that's how they decontaminate a radioactive area is with some adhesive tape. Thank you very much, adhesive tape. Ten times background off the facility.
Now here's a plan maintenance in Illinois. Uh, they're notifying us from yesterday. A plan technical support maintenance plan maintenance activities will commence today, September 2nd, on the Quad City Station. The activity involves inspection and replacement of the TSC charcoal absorber trays, canisters on the filtration portion of the air handling unit. Work on the charcoal absorbers during a declared emergency when radiological conditions require activation of the filter portion of the AHU. During the maintenance is currently planned to begin on September 2nd and estimated to be completed by September 3. Since restoration from this maintenance activity is expected to take longer than the required activation time of the TSC. So we're going to have an extended period of time where they're going to be releasing radiation. 